Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and we continue with my journey to complete Ark Survival Evolved and all of its DLC. And I figured we'd slow things down today, do a little bit more of an old school episode. Now, we're just off the back of defeating the three Titans and we're going to have to defeat them a lot more. I love what Shaz has done with this teleporter here. But let me take you up to the Gigas. This is going to be the Alpha Titan boss defeating army. And perhaps it illustrates a point as to why we've made some of the decisions. Look at the load in time on this base. So if you are on console and you don't have any mods, this is what you're looking at. You're going to have to breed like this. And taking into account if you don't have the Genesis 2 incubator, this is realistically how you're going to have to go about breeding gigas. And it takes a long time. Perhaps you can understand why many community servers and YouTubers use S plus and the nanny mod because otherwise you're looking at this and it really does become a little bit of a chugathon and if you had a community server and a few of you doing this sort of thing before long it will come to a complete standstill but this is where we've got to on the gigas we are now 64 points on melee damage with 16 mutations on melee of course it's not really else any point in adding anything else to the gigas we get very little back for doing health so we're going to take it up to 20 mutations on melee damage after that it gets a little bit harder to stack mutations and if 20 mutations on melee with an average giga is not good enough to beat the alpha king titan then i guess we're going to be in trouble but we're going to be breed plenty of them and we should be able to overwhelm it in numbers but they are looking extremely good at the moment we've also got the argent project and the snow owl project the argents they're going to be much stronger than one the ones you saw us sacrifice in the desert they really were pretty squishy they had next to no health on them uh, we've got the wolves here just started doing this project because of course we're going to have to get all of the explorer notes that's going to be one of the requirements for fjordor and fjordor is going to be the next map that i'm going to be moving on to to do our solo series and continue with the complete arc series so yeah that's the breeding project and i figured perhaps we'll go to the desert cave and we'll go and grab ourselves is it the artifact of chaos and uh, i've got a new creature i want to take out for a spin Let's just try and land in the courtyard i time this right Ooh, it's going to be close Oh, nice. Okay, I need some water and I need some food. But yep, yeah, that's the breeding project and unfortunately, that's how you have to do it if you don't have any mods or any incubator at all. Where's my canteens? I always grab two canteens on this map. Fortunately, they don't empty in your inventory like on Scorched Earth. Ooh, where am I going? Just need to get some food. So on the side, I've been working on a Velonosaur project and I've even managed to breed in some colours and I've got a base pair of Velonosaurs here. Managed to get six mutations in on stamina, one on health, one on melee and one on weight, I believe. And I'll continue stacking the mutations, but... Every region of colour has been filled in and I've made this navy blue one. We've got Scully here and I've also got Mulder in my pocket. But this is the first version of our Volonosaurs. A great creature. First introduced, of course, on Extinction, but it's also available in Genesis Part 2. So I thought I'd just take the chance to answer a few questions because a lot of you are asking, does this mean I'm stopping the series? And... To be honest with you, when I started this series, Genesis wasn't even out. We didn't even have cryopods, in fact, when I first started Complete Arc. And it's taken me almost three years to get to this point. And of course, I've done it all again with the Complete Crew here as well. So I've gone through it all twice. And Fjordor is going to force you to go through it all again. I mean, it's one of the requirements to be able to wield Thor's hammer is you need to be a level 190, which means you need to go onto the island map, Scorched Earth, and do all of them creatures again. So it's not really me who's can change 
the conditions for the playthrough, this wild card themselves. And I welcome this challenge as well. Before Arc 2 comes out, I would like to be able to wield Thor's hammer. And there's no way I can do that solo in it as, as we have been doing. And I would rather do Genesis 1 and 2 with the community and the the complete crew or have a community map to do them two maps on because they really are geared towards just multiplayer sessions the games the things the races the scoreboards it's not really a map that you that you want to solo so i'm going to be having a rotating map but fjordor is going to be the focus of the playthrough this way i'm going to get an opportunity to go back to the island we'll have a rotating map one month we'll have the island and I guess if you're just getting started and Fjordor's the first map you're coming to then there's no reason why you can't start mixing up the creatures we're gonna have to we're gonna have to you've always been able to do this on official maps so we're gonna be able to use whatever creatures we find and take them off maps so it's gonna give me new and interesting ways to show you how to beat some of the bosses for instance this Volonosaur is really great against the Lava Golem on Ragnarok, but it doesn't appear on Ragnarok, but it really is a great creature to have. And I'm probably going to illustrate this when we go out into the Desert Cave, because Volonosaurs just absolutely shred all of the Rubble Golems. And again, on Scorched Earth, one of these would be pretty handy. And yeah, but basically the rules have changed because what we're going to have to do to be able to complete Fjordor. It can't be done on just Fjordor alone. It, it warrants going to do Genesis Part 1, 2 and all four of the core maps. So it's a lot, a lot of content and I want to get there before the end. So we're going to be mixing it up a little bit and I will be coming back even to Extinction. I'll come back when Extinction is on the rotation, pick up any of them notes that we're missing or just even just farm the bosses solo with some of the projects that we'll have going on but i'm also really looking forward to getting onto fjordor if any of you watched any of the stuff that i did on fjordor for the community map i think we're gonna end up or i want to i want to build in that same cave that we was in but i've got an idea for my last base build and i really want to make fjordor my home i'm going to I want to get all of the trophies as well. I want to get some dermises of all of the bosses, get all of the flags and have something to display all of this work. So we're going to go back and uh, face off against pretty much all of the bosses again. And we're going to have to slowly do work our way through Genesis 1 and 2. I, I honestly think when it comes to Genesis 1 and 2, there'll be a few episodes that I'll do which about taming the creatures and, and and the odd episode but i think in terms of watching it back you really don't want to watch us grind out all of the boat missions and all of that i just probably want to show that in highlights and it's it's a grind so i want to keep you updated on the progress of how their maps are going you know and perhaps do live streams over on genesis one and two but for content I'm not sure what I can really do with that on YouTube other than, like I say, condense it right down and uh, perhaps show you some fails and things in that mission. Some of the frustrating things, I could probably make some fun content on that specifically. So the plan is I still want to complete the game. I still want to get all of the trophies and I'm going to go back and do all of this stuff again, including fighting the Overseer at some point when the island map comes back on the rotation uh, it's just this time i'm going to be keeping our creatures and we're going to be jumping map to map once every month there'll be something new on the rotation or at least that's the plan for now okay so let's do one of the map transitions i guess we'll make our way towards the artifact of chaos <laughs> Okay, Mulder, you just follow me. So this is the desert cave and most people are just going to go through here on a giga. The cave is wide enough. You don't really need to go in here, but I just want to show you how good these creatures are and they're going to be really effective in other caves as well. 
So here's our turret mode. Now oh, we've got some Mantis in here, Anthropolora of course. I have switched out of my tech gear into some ghillie because I don't want to damage that stuff. This Mantis. And this is always good practice for your whistles as well. But we've got a mated pair so we do increase damage. To flyers, both in PvP and PvE, when you hit a flyer it will drop to the floor. It's one of the effects of these darts that the Velonosaur shoots out. So they can work well as base defense as well. You can put them on turret mode. And of course it doesn't cost ammunition. And look, here we go, perfect example. We've got a rock golem here. And it'll make short work. That was a 145. So yeah, there's not much in this cave. There's a couple of anthros here. For the most part, you really only need to come in here to grab the key and then activate the boss. But there is some loot in here. And of course we've got this move as well. I think they've done... I used to do a lot more damage that move, I'm sure it did, but... Sort of an area of effect. Let's just send Mulder up ahead. It's always good to have a couple of these. So they're good at ranged, you can just send one in and then cover it, of course. we go, another rock golem. Another 145. And it doesn't take very long to get through the rock golems. Rubble golems. Okay, onward. Just go down here. I'll send Mulder out in front. Got there. Is that an Ampro? I do whistle attack targets sometimes, but for the most part, I just whistle two. Because the whistle commands, they've got kind of messed up. They don't always work. And continue. Mantis. Yeah, that move's definitely doing reduced damage. Okay, but some more questions I've had. Well, actually, quite a lot of questions I've had are my thoughts on Arc 2. And I could make a video dedicated to my thoughts on Arc 2 and what we know at the moment. But what we know is kind of very little, but they did put out of course on Steam on the sales page that ARK is going to be third person only. We're not going to have any first person and of course I am disappointed to hear that. I mean right now of course we're in third person. I'm on the dinosaur. I like that but I, I like being in first person. It's, it all adds to the immersion of any game and you know that does kind of worry me but until I can actually play the game really everything is kind of just speculation uh, well we can look at what Unreal has been showcasing and I suppose one of the things that worries me is with their most recent update I think it was back in April they were showing the Lyra demo and that was a demo on creating a first person or a third person shooter game and to me it looks like they're going down the Fortnite road of like right now we are in the bottom left hand corner firing and it's kind of over the shoulder but I want to be able to look down the end of the rifle or the gun or the bow and arrow you know that it really does change a massive thing about 
what makes Ark great in the first place. But oh, <laughs> things like that, things like just invisible water, that's what makes Ark great in the first place. <laughs> but yeah, some of those, oh, there is some nice points in this cave. The thing is with the extinction caves is they're all extremely big and you can just come in here with a giga and just walk through it basically so they're not really that challenging. I always felt that a lot of the free DLC maps and they really did take caves to a next level and put some puzzles in and I would have liked to have seen more of that and I want to see more of that in Ark 2. That's something I really do want to see more attention to caves just feel like there's an ambush up ahead there so we'll send Mulder out in front yeah I thought so like I say they really do work well against these rubble golems so a certain part of me is really worried about Ark 2 <laughs> looking like a Fortnite game with that over the shoulder mechanic now of course we do have games like Conan and that also doesn't have third person, so until we, you know, until we play it, we really won't know. I can't deny I am excited for some of the things that Unreal can do. I mean, when it comes to character creation, I mean, some of that stuff looks real. I mean, and that's one thing I really hope that Ark 2 has is some m amazing character creation tools. When you look at what they can do with just the eyes and the amount of detail that can come out, it looks almost real. And, you know, so that is something I'm looking forward to. Haven't really seen much of how building might work in Arc 2. Haven't really seen any examples of that. So be interested to see what wildcard does in terms of offer us building but they of course in the steam sales page they said that we're going to be able to use blueprints to upload our builds and that says to me or suggests that we're going to have a lot of com customization when it comes to building and that's one of the things that drew me to arc in the first place i was kind of playing armor 3 or the daisy mod at the time and the Epoch version of that mod offered building and it was right around that time that I picked up Ark Survival. Well, I picked up Ark Survival on day one. It was right up my street and I will, of course, be sat here waiting on day one of Ark 2. So no matter what it is, they've already got my money, but I can't say or I can't help be a little bit disappointed at the fact that it's going to be like this view. We're always going to be over the shoulder and, you know, dodge mechanics and souls like combat. I don't know. That's not really why I play Ark Survival Evolved. So I know I don't often go into first person mode when I'm on the back of a dinosaur or creature, but, you know, it is nice to do so. It, you know, it's just... One of the things that I'll miss, but I'm sure somebody will mod it if uh, Wildcard can't work out how to do it. So hopefully it's not the limitations of the engine. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff. So onward to grab the artifact of the chaos. Like I say, for the most part, when you come in here, you're just going to come in here to activate the boss and being that the, the actual artifact is right next to the terminal kind of the well yeah it just makes the caves on extinction extinction less relevant okay so the artifact is is it just round here just round the side of this rock uh, yeah just here and as you can see the terminals just over there in the distance but I thought well hey lights blinded by the lights there we go an artifact of the chaos and <laughs> that is one thing that uh, I'm sure Ark 2 is going to get right and that is not being blinded by the lights 
I mean, uh, yeah. I wonder, I knew that lag spike before. Anytime you get a huge lag spike on extinction, it's just before the asteroids are about to impact. It's kind of like um, an early warning. Okay. Oh. Not as effective as the Phylocolios, of course, because they were doing bleed damage now, so Phylos, again, another great option against the Rubble Golems, but originally the Volonosaur was definitely the way to go with them. Continue on down this way. But yeah, the Asteroid impacts, they were pretty cool. It was, I don't know. Even though there is that lag spike before it happens, I think I preferred it to... Um, I mean, I think my least favourite of the kind of weather or events that are map specific... Uh, I mean, I suppose it would be Genesis 1 with the swarms of... that. That is just... it never lets up if you build or if you're in the swamp zone that I suppose fog there's all <laughs> um, the sandstorms on scorched earth pretty much stop you so at least like I say on this map with the meteor storms you know you can get to cover cover and uh, yeah, it does add that extra element of danger, especially if you're doing an element node at the time, or if you're doing one of the orbital supply drops. Here we go. This is the terminal, and kind of just out there, you get a view of a giant crater, which of course is where, when the arcs come into land, where it actually lands just there. And... The only other note in this cave is just there. It's another one who waits. When it comes to summoning the Desert Titan, of course, there's only one level to the first three Titans. We'll tame them. I'm going to take this one on a few times. We're going to take on all of the Titans a few times. Might even do a live stream for taking on the Titans, actually. Might go live on YouTube for a couple of hours, just do all three of them or something, but... Yeah, this is the desert cave and the final cave. Let us say, perhaps not the most exciting and most people will do it on a Giga, but Volonosaurs are very effective in caves. And moving forward, I want to show you when we eventually get onto that rotation of Ragnarok, when we put that on for a month, I think we'll be taking Mulder and Scully in to show you how effective they will be against the Lava Golem. So that's the artifact of the chaos and the final artifact that we need to collect. Of course, they're not too difficult on the extinction map, but I'm going to come back and get some Dermances and we're going to build our own tribute area when we get to Fjordor. But uh, some really cool artifacts. Of course, I'm going to be coming back with some videos on how to tame all of the Titans that we're facing off against. It's going to be fun to throw them in on the final fight. And let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on Arc 2. Are you apprehensive? Are you excited for what's coming? I always look forward to reading the comments and I do apologize for not replying to many, but I always read the comments. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.